it turned out there wasn't any room that, for that in my suit either because the moment I got to Poppy, <laughs> I felt a nice new breeze on my nuts and I realized <laughs> that I split my Tom Ford suit in <laughs> half. Welcome back to the pod. Jeremy just called me Loran. And what, what pod is this, Loran? This is the, what number? Oh, I don't know. It's oh wild, man, it's fucking wild. Wild till nine. Wild till nine. Episode, episode 100 and something. Whichever one you're listening to now. <sighs> Hosted by Lorraine and Jeremy. <laughs> What's up? Um, <laughs> 106. 106? 106, I feel good about 106. Lauren, there's two types of people in this world. Is it Lorraine and Jeremy's? One person who closes tabs uh -huh. and applications when they're done. Yeah. And the other who doesn't until they get a new phone. Which one are you? Let, 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 why don't we just open our um, browsers right now on your phone and tell oh, and shit, okay. share with the class how many tabs we have. No, no, open. no. Do, on the phone, how many apps? How, how do how, I know? Okay, just, well, so I'm gonna close them? Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, oh. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 64, I mean, Michaels, this is 65, 66, 67, 68, Also 84, I just closed the Air Canada tab from when we traveled in August. 85, 86, 87, 88, what? 89, 90, 91, 92, what? 93, 93, 93, You're not still 94, going. 95, 96, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Oh, okay, we're starting out. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Six, this seven, like eight. A nine, joke that 10, I hate. 11, 12, no. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. We're going to have to do a timer. We're going to have to. We're just going to have to. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 53, 153. What? <laughs> when I tell you. And then I closed apps on there. I closed an app from our, the old app that we had to use for the remote for our TV many months ago. Wow. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I saw a Tiki Talk. I saw something on TikTok the other day that said that closing out those apps doesn't even really save your battery. To no, you're totally right. Really? I don't know if that's necessarily true. Yeah, that, well, that's what that's what like some techie man was saying that it, like it doesn't even really make a difference on like the battery life of your phone and like the operating use or whatever of things that are running in the background. As long as you, like you have like your um, whatever setting turned off where it's not running in the background. And have you gone through and manually done that? I'm sure I have. <laughs> <laughs> I um. Do wow. you think there's any correlation uh -huh. between your or a person's mm -hmm. ones? chances of turning an application off when you're done uh -huh. and turning the light off when you walk out of a room? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. Um, because <laughs> I noticed you don't do either. <laughs> like, if I didn't live here, mm -hmm. so when I moved in years ago, years ago, mm -hmm. Lauren had a nightlight on and I thought it was a nightlight and it was cute because it like helped her not stumble in and out of the bathroom. <laughs> and then I realized it's just a, a light that's on at night. <laughs> And day. We talking okay. the hallway light? No, like the closet the, light? The bathroom with a fan. <laughs> I like a little white noise. I feel. I like a little white noise. Okay. You know what? Also too, it's like when Moose, and I'm like, Moose doesn't throw up that often in the middle of the night, but when he does, who is the parent that is stumbling to the crate to get him out in time to, to catch the throw up in the trash can, in the pitch black? Mom right there. It is mom. It's yeah. mom. And so if I want a little nightlight action well, to catch my son's Let's be clear. It's rooms away from this thing. You might get catch a little bit of it. But oh, you're gonna mean it helps yeah. so much. Yeah. I, you know, I just- um, there, You know what though? The lighting situation in this house has been very confusing up until recently when Jeremy kind of took control of it. There was one specific light that didn't get programmed to a switch. So there was there was a, a, a like a whole house 
light switch where if I turned that one on, <laughs> I could turn on every single light in the house. Shout out Lutron. Shout out Lutron. But, but it, not. that one specific light didn't have a light switch to turn it off. It had, an, by the way, it had an app that would do it just fine, but Lauren didn't open that app. <laughs> She had I the other have the app she, installed. She had the other, other 156 apps 53. that were open. Yeah. And so anyways, so if I wanted this light on, I had to turn every single light on oh. in the house and then and then turn, go through each and every individual room and turn all those lights off just so I could have that one specific, like it's like the big hallway light in the main like entryway <laughs> that's like fucking a bunch, very high. So sorry, plant in the background, I just smacked it. Anyways, I told you, big brain, lots of folds. And you know what? I think like the association the association of like having a big brain with lots of folds means that there's also so many folds just dedicated to having stress and anxiety inserted into those little folds of intelligence and it's exhausting I Go feel ahead. boo allow me to add some just sprinkles to this little sunday you prepared for us i will say mm -hmm. that when we play games together yeah like against other couples yeah we smash smash because there's very little overlap between where my brain mm -hmm. leaves off mm -hmm. and yours picks up. Yeah, no, no, we, yeah. we really cover um, a wide variety of genres Stuff. of knowledge. Well, I also think that we collectively know a lot of otherwise like useless shit. So much useless shit. Like you, so you much. are a crock pot of random knowledge. Also, like I, I just, I just really feel as if one of our most educational podcasts was actually the Animal Fact podcast, and I, I just feel like I learned so much. I came away from that episode learning so much. I, I'm not entirely sure that if you ask me the same questions right now, mm -hmm. that any of them would have stuck, but I know they stuck with you. Yeah. And? Penguins, necrophilia. Yep. Not to mention the uh, meme you sent me this morning at 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> which we'll play, <laughs> we'll show yes, somewhere. Like, put it up on screen, I forget what it was it's since adorable. it's 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, 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 pull it up. It was. Why are see. you awake at 4.30 in the morning? Couldn't sleep last Jeremy, night. Jeremy couldn't sleep, and so then he woke me up um, and okay, I didn't try that. Okay, that's why I was stressed. I don't. I don't like waking you up. No, no, no. But like, you got up to go downstairs because you couldn't sleep, and so I woke up because I was like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" Yeah. No. Like, if we're downstairs. By the way, here's another thing. This is. Uh, I we had some company this weekend, and it's always good when company comes over, mm -hmm. and they can look at both of the ways what that we exist, and they kept looking at Lauren and going, "You do it that way." <laughs> Just like how many times did both the guy and the girl just go, wait, that that's You're, how you do it? You? And it reminds me. I would me. say the main one would be that like, I'm okay drinking a room temperature sparkling water. And I understand that there are, that's a red flag for some people. I rest my case. And that was the one thing that I think collectively they both, everyone in the room was just like, what is wrong with you? If I, if we were in court and mm -hmm. I was trying to prove that you murdered someone. Yeah. All I would do is just set up lukewarm sparkling water on the desk and oh. watch the jury do this. Delicious. She, she's not gonna. Refreshing. Like she. Quenches my she thirst. She starts salivating. Like if you're outside, if you get in a car after it's been in the sun all day. Look at this thing. I've been carrying it around since like 5 p.m. noon. And it's, ah. it's the, the water, the sparkling water is above your body temperature mm -hmm. outside and you're thirsty, like, would you drink that? It depends how thirsty I was. Like, would I enjoy it? No. Like, I think that like, I've, I've like been choking on a cracker before or something in the car or granola bar. And like, you just grab the closest like car water bottle and you're like, oh, this for sure is just a bottle of cancer of like hot BPA in, plastic. In, yeah, but in that scenario, that's the least thing I'm worried about. Oh, okay. It's the hot sparkling water. <laughs> Gross. It's not hot. It's I mean, it's. Were you gonna send in that picture? Or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So sorry, I got distracted. Okay. So it's a little. It's a little for our audio listeners. It's a little like marshmallow cutie man uh -huh. wearing little overalls, and he's sitting there, just thumbs up, just looking so cute. Me understanding a part of something my significant other is passionate about, and then it zooms out, and it's this large mega muscle man with a computer as a head saying, "My significant other, an expert in their passion." Yeah. And he's patting marshmallow man on the head, and it is adorable. Well, I think it's a woman, but yeah. Well, bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So stop, drop, roll, rate the pod, burp again, um, and welcome back. That's what a lukewarm sparkling water does to you. <laughs> really uh, excites the body. Like you, you, <laughs> You've worked out before and drank sparkling water on many yeah. occasions. Oh yeah, for sure. Sometimes I like it. No, I, 
I just have such an issue drinking water. I don't know what it is. I I like, and I don't know. You know what? No, people have said this to me as well too. They just have a really hard time drinking water. So something about sparkling water. And again, like I don't drink that much flavored sparkling water because I know there's like little chemicals and stuff. And it's not great to like have your only hydration source be like a LaCroix. But I drink a shit ton of regular sparkling sparkling water because I think there's just like something a little more exciting about it. It's a little spicy, you know? And Uh so I have such a hard time drinking just like regular ass water. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, whatever, whatever keeps it moving to keep no, me hydrated. No, this is great. I, I yeah. love it. I support it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I probably drink half a liter <laughs> at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I love it. Just keep going. I probably drink like half a liter in flat water at the gym and I like, I really struggle through it. And then I get home, I start to start my sparkling journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we, should we talk about the Emmys now? This is great. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's not great. I just had to know, you know. Yeah. How healthy is it? In moderation. You heard that it was a two to one sparkling to non-sparkling water ratio? No, 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 no. This is LaCroix. This is sparkling water that's got like the flavor in it. Because although it says natural flavors, you know, it's like it's a little something that's well, not so it, natural. At a certain point, everything we've got in the world was at one point in time natural. Seriously. Just the bleach on top of it makes it a little iffy. Right. It's a little flavor. We've had a pretty social week. I, yeah, I need to, I feel like I, I'm like um, an ambivert. I'm an ambivert. And I kind of sit in the middle between introvert and extroverted. And Ambie wambies. A little ambie wambie, a little ambie wambie action. And we have had a wildly extroverted last five days. I would say me more so than you, because obviously they're, they're my friends visiting from Toronto. And so we had adventures. Oh my God, the amount of things has been a jam packed weekend. It's been so much fun. Um, but now I do feel as if I need to sit in a, a quiet room quietly by myself. The quiet room quietly. Quiet room quietly by myself. Yeah. You know, it needs to be a quiet room, but then I also need it to be quiet. Like I can't be listening to something or talking to someone. I just need. I need to also be quiet in a quiet space. I like that last. Part. Um, Thank you. Now we're from our sponsor, Better Help. Have you ever had one of those weeks where everything is going wrong? It seems like nothing is working in your favor. And instead of going into problem solving mode, you are in problem focus mode. This week. I know, (laughs) yesterday, it was (laughs) literally my yesterday. I know when my plate gets filled to the brim, it's hard for my brain to find solutions to problems that can easily be fixed. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem solving mode and face the challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small. Finding a therapist that's right for you is such a game changer. I know for me personally, talking to a therapist has really helped lower my overall stress levels. Being able to talk about all the things causing stress in my life ironically makes me feel less stressed. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betteragelp.com slash WT9. Y'all, you know what we love? Not paying monthly fees for your checking account because who likes extra fees? Nobody. Who likes what fees? D- what? Who likes extra fees? Who likes extra fees? Who likes extra fees? Who likes extra fees? Nobody. Extra Nobody fees. does. Nobody likes extra fees. Chime is a refreshing way to handle your money with no monthly fees and no maintenance fees or minimum balance fees. It's how banking should be. When you need access to your money, you can do so fee-free at more than 60,000 in-network ATMs at many locations like most Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and CVS. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime. Chime, no monthly fees, no vibe killing fees. Sign up for a Chime checking account. It only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash WT9. That's chime.com slash WT9. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank NA, members FDIC. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees apply except at MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any all pointer Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Other fees such as third party and cash deposit fees may apply. You can't, you don't decompress by listening to things? Uh, Sometimes, sometimes. It's not so much listening. It's more that I need to be in a, uh, I need to be horizontal on the couch. I've never met a woman who uses the word horizontal more than you. I love being horizontal. 
Does it not make so much sense though? Like being vertical. She likes being horizontal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, horizontal. You want to get horizontal? Not particularly. <laughs> being vertical is fucking exhausting. And so when you get to be horizontal, like literally at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to be horizontal tonight. I mean, for the first <laughs> year and a half of when we worked kind of ish together, yeah. you insisted on in just being a C on the couch. And my back pain is a a very direct consequence of that. Big old boobies. Yeah, big old boobies. Um, but no, I love being horizontal, and I like to recharge on the couch with a squish mellow or two, a lot of soft blankets, probably a, a room temperature sparkling water, and like if The Bachelor is playing on TV or something like that, that I'm not like I'm thirty three percent paying attention to. That's like that's like a recharging. Okay. Yeah. All right. My brain just needs to be able to rest. And yeah. I'm gonna be honest, The Bachelor is not like some really like like uh, you titillating. know thought provoking titillating content. Titillating. Yeah. Titillating. 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 Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, you know what word I heard on a podcast today was salacious. Ooh. Good I'm word, right? That's good. Yeah. yeah. Good word. Salacious. Oh, yeah. Titillating. Till titillating. And uh, so it's, I just need, I just need something that is brainless enough that it, it, I can rest. My favorite is when Lauren gets super tired and I say one of the things that year of the four that she finds semi funny and she'll just go, eh, that was funny, Shavu. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, go sleep. You, you're, done. <laughs> you're done. Like when I'm tired. Katie's like, huh, that was really funny. <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> I either live with a psychopath or someone who's really mean. <laughs> Neither. I'm just tired. You're a delight. I'm a fucking delight. I'm a sleepy girl. Speaking of delights, I'm so glad everyone loved Donna last oh, week. Oh, people love Donna on the yeah. pod. We had a lot of we had a lot of copyright issues last week. Had we a had lot enough. of copyright issues. Took us a solid day. Also, it was a combination of Emmy related hangover because the Emmys were on Monday and typically we would do pod related stuff on the Monday night. Yeah. So we both kind of dropped the ball on that, and then uh, one of us was more hungover than the other. And one of us was. I'll let you. I'll let you fill in the blanks on. I'll let What's you. I'll let you cast by your ballot. Noon, back in the game. Back in the game, baby. I I wonder. So. Every once in a while, I'll wake up now. Mm -hmm. Like when you wake up still slightly intoxicated from the night before. Mm -hmm. And again, I actually, it's almost a gift because the worst is yet to come. Oh, that's not a gift. What? I, I want to sleep through that part. Well, I mean, yes. But point is, if you wake up just sober and yeah. feeling bad, yeah. that's worse feeling than if you're kind of still drunk and feeling kind of bad. No, I just Okay, for me, as okay. someone who's not a queasy individual. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I I woke up in that status on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and I think by the time that I was out of my stupor mm -hmm. and and back in the game, you were dying. Oh, uh, but, but it could have been social as well. What day was that? That would have been on Tuesday. What did we do on Tuesday? Unsure. I can't even remember. Yesterday. <laughs> oh, my, literally, yeah. What it was my day like yesterday? I don't even remember. I'm sleepy. I can tell. I'm <laughs> yeah. so sleepy. We, this podcast Again, is going to be brought to you by Lauren's- Being horizontal. Unfiltered first thought. Oh yeah. And yeah. then the continued one. I know. We have a, I, we are in, you are in for a treat today. But we have a lot of updates. Um, the Emmys were cool. <laughs> of the fucking 10 minutes of the Emmys that we watched. Yeah. All 10 minutes of them were cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well- I, I don't feel good about this. What do you mean? I don't feel good about this. Why? About the, no, I go back and forth. Go ahead, go ahead. Recap, do our do our our, our top level Emma recap. Emma recap? Emma recap. I, uh, I like seeing my friends. Same. I like seeing um, some people that I've admired on the television. Mm -hmm. And I like having a, a libation station pretty close. I too love a libation station. Hey, by the way. That's a great name. That is a great name. Uh, that's like a band. That's my recap. Okay. So I started getting ready at 11.30 a.m. And there's nothing that makes me want to throw knives more than how easy it is for most dudes to get ready. I think I started getting ready. <sighs> if it was an hour before, I'd be shocked. I, I, oh, 100% no was way. not. There's, there's no way. I think it was about 32 minutes. Yeah, I think so as well too. Yeah. And so I was about a four hour, three and a half to four hour engagement of hair and makeup, of which my hair and makeup artist fucking killed it. Like, I don't know if I have looked better in my life, maybe? Yeah. And I mean, they did a great job. They did so great. 
Uh, but it, it was, it, it is a commitment of time. And so like, I think the night also just feels so much longer because I feel like my Emmy's journey starts at 1130 where it's like yours probably started around like 5 p.m. when we got there. Right. Yeah. And um, wow, is that what comes up when you search Lord DIY Emmys? Yeah. Thank God. SEO finally doing something right. Cause some of the photos that also came up were not accurate. <laughs> no. Not quite. Oh, it's us. Photo. Look. So cute. Black and white. Look at us. The couple's photos that Jeremy and I take before and after Jeremy has had alcohol are worlds apart. Worlds apart. You will not see a sober photo of Jeremy from a photo taking engagement beforehand. Nope. I, what's funny is my mother has always hated taking pictures. Uh -huh. Hated, not interested. Okay. But I, I, I told you many times, I don't think I, I think I was born at about 17 or 18 because mm -hmm. we didn't really have a camera at home either. And that took, is so not true. I have literally seen photos, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But so yeah, other people took pictures of me and gave them to my mother. Okay. You weren't there. And so I now know what it's like. I now also hate taking pictures. I know. I hate it. I, I hate it. I don't know. I hate it. I don't understand why. I hate it. It's like, it's just like so crazy. It's like, who knows if we'll ever go to the Emmys again. So it's like, we look so nice. We're done up all cute. Totally. Just give me a little smile. But if we don't go to the Emmys again, then that means something didn't go well. And we maybe don't need to remember that. I think it's because I see photos of like uh, old pictures of you from your Instagram and on Facebook and stuff. And you are, look much happier in photos. So I'm like, okay, so he just hates me. It's like, okay, noted, <laughs> got it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, have you noticed that I also don't post anything on social media at all ever? Yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah. yeah I'm, still, I'm still waiting on my birthday Instagram post. You no, know, no, keep waiting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just am so tired of people's commentary. And so I just don't participate in it. I snapped back on someone today on YouTube. See, was it on my behalf too? No. Oh, well, usually you get real it, unreasonable one them, about me. I actually snapped back on two people today. One was on Moose's behalf and one was on mine. I was scotch. So you just, it wasn't that I didn't have any hate. You just didn't snap back at that person. You actually weren't in this vlog at all. So there was no hate. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're, you're good. Um, people always come for me. They're like, you're such an irresponsible dog owner. Your dog's nails are too long. And I'm like, motherfucker, you want to sit here and file my dog's nails like I do once a week for like fucking two nails at a time because he has vet aversion. And it is something that I struggle with every vet visit and grooming visit. Let me see you bust out the file, fucking Sarah. Yeah. I, yeah. What? I, listen, Sarah Makes sucks. Me so angry. Sarah sucks. Once it's again, like, that's why I don't post shit, but also like- Sarah's she, mad at the world. She found time to talk about you. Right, it literally was like the vlog- And now we're finding time to talk about her. That's the terrible. vlog like had been out, the vlog had been out for like, like, I don't know, 20 minutes, like, and there was like 40 comments and one of them was about uh, Moose's nails. And I was like, you have me fucking, and I was like, I haven't eaten dinner yet, so I was a little hangry. And then someone else was like, I don't understand why people watch these. It was, it was on the vlog. They were like, I don't understand why people watch these vlogs. It's like, all you do is hang out with your friends, eat and like show your clothes and show you like with like your friends and family. And I was like, does someone want to tell Julia what a vlog is like? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know. Also, thanks true. for the view, bitch. Oh, Loran. Pew, 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 pew. What? Be nicer today. <laughs> no. I, I well, like this bad, Lauren. God. She Why am I, like, I'm the one telling you to be nice. <laughs> I had low internet tolerance today. I could tell. One of our, um, there's this, there's this uh, like stupid crypto related uh, acronym called FUD and it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Nailed it. And one of our, one of my NFT friends responded back and he was like, it's like, don't think about, don't worry about the FUD. And I was like, wow, that actually is quite nice. It's nice here. It it's is nice here. It is quite nice. Yeah, the other thing I hate is also every time that I post something mm -hmm. publicly mm -hmm. and I've got, I don't know, anywhere between one and 29 people that I haven't texted back about something that they need from me that I don't think is that important. Mm -hmm. And they'll just, I could tell they see it and they just pile on right after as if like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm at my phone. Now I'll just sit here and respond to everyone's messages. Like, mm -hmm. No, go away. Ugh. Gonna be honest, I would love for your response game to be a little bit better because then people would stop texting me to ask you to respond. But then we wouldn't have that special bond. Special bond. You know that we have a couple friend who's much worse about responding and giving information than I could ever be. I, there is literally nothing that makes you wanna murder someone more than being unhelpful. Also too, if they're the key to the plans, yeah. you know what I mean? If they're the key holder to the plans. They're the enabler. Being executed, but they're not responding to like any of like the planning yeah. uh, coordination. Uh, 
God, there's nothing that pisses a type A bitch fucking more off than that. Well, and also like, I'm- I, I, almost, I almost unfriended him. I was like, I don't want to be a friend. I, I cannot, I cannot grow. But then you see him in person. I cannot flourish then you see him in, person. And in you, these conditions. And what happens? I mean, he's great. I love him. He's see? great in person. Yeah. But God. if we can't get to the place that we need to be because we don't have the details. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. So were the Emmys what you anticipated them being? Uh, have you been to a, a television award show before? No. No? Have you not been to the Oscars with me? No. You didn't, you didn't go with me, did you? No. You The last time you went to the Oscars, you were you were in like their tech booth or whatever. Remember we were in the truck? No, I was in it. Okay, just well, kidding. I mean, first half. I didn't, then... didn't get the invite. She's been to the, the streamies, have you? Yeah, the fucking streamies. You saw me there. Yeah. Um, but no, we, so strategically, we- like How do I keep, what, I, I couldn't be less talented. Why am I at all these places? It makes no fucking sense. That's why I stopped, you know what? That's why I stopped using the internet. Cause I was tired of people asking the same question I was. Why are you like here at this place? I don't know either. They just let me in. So you're here right. I am. You're so well connected. You are. Yeah. yeah. Why are you verified? I don't know. Ask fucking Mark. Yeah, Mark. Where's my invite? You're all, go ahead. Um, so we strategically had planned to have seats that were, um, cause like part of, part of a lot of these like award shows is that because there are so many like panorama crowd shots and audience shots that they have, um, like a specific team dedicated to being seat fillers. So if someone important who's at like a main table goes to the bathroom, they have to fill that seat because there can't be just like an empty seat on camera. Well, okay. So the. The concept that I think no one will understand unless they've gone to like a reality or game show, or whatever, is that when you are witnessing a production, mm -hmm. I don't care what the production is, mm -hmm. you aren't, the show is not for you. No, 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 no. You are part of the yeah, show. Yeah, you are part of the show. The and show is for the people at home. If you're on your couch in Iowa and you've got a remote control in your hand, that show's been made for you. The person that's in a dress hasn't breathed in six hours and couldn't eat a cracker if they want it. <laughs> They're nothing more than a, a, a just a prop that needs to yeah. be in that place. So if they go take a pee and it's an empty seat, mm -hmm. unfortunately, for whatever reason, we don't know how to process empty seats. So we have to fill these seats all the time. Yeah, yeah. So they'll have like literal- Seat fillers. Just like seat fillers who are running to and from other seats and just clapping. And also the other thing is that you have to look like you are moderately enjoying yourself the entire time, just in case the camera's on you. So it's like, you have to have a, like a light smile happening and clapping. You have to be, you have to be like fully oh, present yeah. to know what's going on. Full Stepford Wives. So we were, we were like up really, really high basically. We nailed the most um, out of the way, mm -hmm. but still, a elevated experience that yeah, one could have. Totally. And for someone who has not so great vision, I probably could have enjoyed the experience a little more had I made an appointment with an eye doctor and maybe gotten some contacts or something, which I'm actually thinking about doing. I'm thinking about going back to contacts. You? Yeah. What about LASIK? I'm very scared to get LASIK. Oh. Very scared. Okay. So, the gift of vision does sound very nice though. So right? you, have you used contacts before? You have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't bother you to stick your finger into your eye, right? I don't, no, no, no. My, my issue is not, I mean, I could touch my eyeball right now. You've seen me and I lick each other's eyeballs just to like freak other people out. Like, I don't care. What we do in our time. Keep going. <laughs> You're like onlyfans.com slash me Sayoko for eyeball licking content. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a kink out there. Well, like Jeremy is so eyeball squeamish. And so like, it's just, it's just funny. It's like one of those things that is like, it's like you get eyeballs a kick out buttholes. of it. When you get eyeballs Jeremy to be. I've My own never. <laughs> Yours is fine. <laughs> Mine's adorable. I don't. Okay, we're not. We have to move on. <laughs> so anyway, the eyeball thing is like I don't mind putting the contact in, but I have. I I think one is combination of nails. Mm. And eyelids that are not that stretchy because my eyes aren't of like. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. No, because my eyes aren't that small. Like I actually have quite decently large Asian eyes. So it's not, it's not a race thing. It's literally, I just think that my eyelids are like not stretchy enough. You know what it is probably too? Lash extensions. That also doesn't help the situation, but you can get contacts that are. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep... does, someone, does someone want to take over? No, no, babe. I want you to do exactly what you're doing. Little do you go, I think about me, my, no, it's my fake nails. No, I think it might be my fake nails. It might be my fake nails. It's just like, oh my God. <laughs> I can't see it. I'm thinking about getting contacts, but they're difficult to put in. Look, I don't my, know why my I can't put my contacts in when I've got nine things that I've altered <laughs> on my body between my 
finger t- nips and my finger nips, <laughs> my finger nips, finger nips <laughs> and my eye. I was like, you, there was seven things that got in your way that like There's none many, of them many were necessary. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the lashes, the nails. It's the non stretchy eyelids. No. And by the way, who has stretchy eyelids? <sighs> um, like the way that I see Mia put in her contacts is crazy. Are you telling me that she got stretchy eyelids? Mia got them stretchy eyelids. No, that's lids. not. That's Mia not, got them that's stretchy not a lids. Not a, not like a I just feel like she can pull her eyelids so open that she can see her whole like actual pupil and then just poke it in where it's like, I have a really hard time pulling both the top and the bottom down to the it's point where- It's not a where, coordination. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a lot. So anyways, I think I've just talked myself out of getting contacts. <laughs> I, I think there's probably a sponsor to there if if we can stick with it. Um, Especially if you have like a stigmatism or something. Glasses? Gla- she, 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 glasses? So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lauren yeah, has yeah. the smallest nose, the smallest little nose. It's really not that small. Small little nose and small little face. Do they just face, fall down? And they just kind of just like sit yeah, on tough. her on her face. I know. It's adorable. It's, it's having a half Asian nose, you know you, what I mean? It's like, I don't have like a full enough. bridge. It's not tight enough around your ears. You know what I actually have been finding is that if I hook the um, arms of the glasses kind of into my extensions tracks. There you it kind of holds them in place. Stuck. Whoa. I have to poop. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh my God. Intermission. Fucking shoot me. <laughs> There's so much going on. There's so much going on. Yo, it's like Adderall, no Adderall Jeremy strike. Have you ever seen a new beauty product drop that looks enticing, but you really have no idea if it's worth the hype or not? It can be so frustrating when you spend a ton of money on a product that ends up being a total flop. And that's why I have been loving Flip. Flip is the latest beauty app that is shaking up the way you can shop for beauty and wellness. Imagine shopping on Sephora, but the reviews are detailed TikTok style videos and the shipping is Amazon fast. Shopping on Flip means you are shopping directly from real verified users of the product you're browsing. With over 500 brands available, on Flip, you can shop all your favorite beauty brands and discover new holy grail products through the most honest and authentic reviews on the market. When you join Flip, you are joining a beauty rewards program unmatched by any other. Get rewarded for what you already do. Scrolling, shopping, voting, or posting your own review all result in free shopping credits. This means you can save up to 30% off your purchase as you rack up rewards. You won't see that with Sephora or Ulta. I've been looking into switching up my daily sunscreen and Flip has been a huge help. I went on the app and looked at reviews for Super Goop Mineral Sunscreen and purchased it immediately, saving 20%. And you know, we love a deal. Up your beauty shopping game with Flip. Download the Flip app for free today and save 30% on your first order with code WILD30. That's code WILD30 for 30% off your first order. Code WILD30 for 30% off your first Flip order. I'm about to use our own promo code. Oh, I already did. That, that, is, a, that is a large <laughs> discount. Welcome back to Wild Till 9, part two. I feel so much better. I'm... I think that I maybe just am not allowed to talk anymore for this podcast and I'll just solely no, provide no, commentary. No, no. no you're, listen, <laughs> I think if people are interested in the real, unabashed, <laughs> just version <laughs> of of their favorite influencer or, or former favorite influencer, they're gonna love this. Their former favorite, yeah, I know. Also, like I was dying on the couch with no energy. I've had a really busy day today and- um, Somehow you found it all right oh, now. Oh, yeah, I said, but moment, I think- The moment the camera's off, you're gonna die, I can feel it. Oh, I know, I can already feel it. Yeah. I feel much better now though. Go ahead. Whatever. Did, what are we talking about? Do you want to talk next? about the Emmys? Yeah, sure. You, no, you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was able to get mine down to like a sentence, which is not a good podcaster, but you know. Mindy Kaling was next to us on the little fake red carpet. So also, I already just feel a tangent coming and I don't know what to do about it. Okay, so. <laughs> if, if you Potential talk, cut. Just page me um, and I'll head on back up. <laughs> So you couldn't do the actual red carpet unless you- I feel like you- we're doing separate podcasts. Like you're doing your version <laughs> and I'm doing mine and we could just like, we could do them separately. Oh God. Um, you couldn't do red carpet. There what? You couldn't do red carpet. Oh yeah, so okay. So you couldn't do the red carpet unless you were a nominee, nominee uh, of an Emmy or whatever, which totally made sense. Cause I mean, normally you can finesse yourself until like any movie premiere for the most part, if like you have, you know, a few thousand Instagram followers, you can finesse yourself to get like professional photos. Couldn't do it this time. This one was a little too legit of uh, an event. By the way, you don't even need a couple, a couple thousand dollars. You just need a publicist. You, right, you're so right. You just need you a need publicist. $5, you need $5,000 a, a month for at yes. least six months mm-hmm. and you can probably yeah. be on any red carpet ever. 100%. Like, 
for the majority yes. of everything that yes. goes on in Hollywood. Completely agree. That yeah. is a great point. You because can, every publicist who's got the clout to get anybody onto the red carpet has enough winners mm -hmm. that the, the production mm -hmm. will take a couple losers mm -hmm. as long as they bring the winners with them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. They package that thing up like a just a shit sandwich and hand it to you. I love a shit. I love being the shit in a shit sandwich. Are you guys the winner or the loser? I'm Always the, shit the winner. In a shit sandwich. My God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You're the winner, my love. Go I'm the on. winner. So you can do the regular red carpet, but they had basically the same carpet color and step and repeat to like take photos against for like the peons, the peasants. And, but you know what was so confusing is that like, I don't know why they chose such a gross color. It was like baby poop yellow carpet. And no. like blue background. Yeah, pull up a photo. Like, like the, the classic red? No, no. also red carpets rarely do red anymore. I don't know if you noticed, they like are going rogue with it and doing crazy colors. And it's, I was actually just listening to a TikTok of uh, Olivia O'Brien talking about I mean, how- It does like, look like my grandmother's entryway. Yeah, like, what the fuck is that carpet color? Oh yeah. Yeah, it is not good. Putrid, yeah. Okay, so there's probably, is that last year of the actual red carpet? But there it is this year. Like what is that yellow? Hey, yellow. It's just not good. I mean, it's the color of the award. And to be fair, red is a stupid color to make the carpet in the first place. But at least you can you can plan for that. You know what I mean? Like you can, if every carpet wow, for Zendaya like events, great. I know Zendaya looks amazing. Her second dress too, like her post winning Emmy's dress was a red one and it was absolutely stunning. She had pockets in her dress. God. That's gotta be can the best relate. thing yeah, you could ever ask incredible. for. She could, she could hide so much stuff in there. Oh my God. Literally. Back to your, um, Point. So we were on the fake peasant red carpet, the gold yellow, which carpet. was the same color and well, probably the, the same color. Yeah. carpet, just, just without the photographers and the good lighting, right? Obviously, and um, this was like a few minutes before the show started, and all of a sudden we're take, taking our silly little photos on the silly little carpet, and a photographer like comes running over, and like there was no, there was not a, a split second in my mind that it was for me. I want to be very clear. And I was like, oh shit, like someone, like someone is like famous, like accidentally coming late to like this side of the carpet. Like, why are they on the peasant side? We turn, we turned, I turned my right and it's Mindy Kaling and BJ Novak or whatever, <gasps> taking their photos together. No, you turn halfway to your right. Uh -huh. And Zayn Hijazi, for whatever reason, is playing photographer for them, for himself. Oh yeah, he was taking yeah. photos of Mindy Kaling for himself. It, I, I he didn't thought, even want a picture of himself on, on the fucking they, yellow carpet. For whatever reason, I was like, I thought they must have handed him the camera to take mm -hmm. a picture because he was just in full photography mode. Yeah. And then just that was, it just it could, I think a joke that he told himself that mm -hmm. everyone found funny. It was incredible. I love that. He's yeah. like so next many. to the actual press taking photos. Yeah. Well, there was like one, one rogue person. photographer that was on peasant side and <laughs> taking her picture, but it was so exciting. I want you to just like she take looks a, so good. a quick read at the average person in attendance there and let me know what you think that looks like peasant wise. But me, yes. it's me, I'm the peasant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 got it. Yeah, I want to be very clear. Um, the, there's actually some, an award or speech mm -hmm. that was given that reminds me of Lauren's attitude tonight. <laughs> So if you could pull up this the best supporting so actress from White right. Lotus. Oh my God. And I'm not gonna give you more context. Oh, uh, go, to, go to around 2.35, I think it starts. Yep, back it up. Yep, back it up. You want to back it up more? Yep. No, oh yeah. That's right. Hey, hey, oh, this, this reminds me of Lawrence this evening. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow, thank you. Gosh, I just, um, <laughs> what a night. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I just want to say, uh, you know, to my fellow nominees, um, just to be in your company, it, it's incredible. Aww. And, um, Alexander Dario. You know, I, I just want to say, um, you know, I took a lavender bath tonight. <laughs> and, um, Icon. I the show, and it made me swell up inside my dress. <laughs> and uh, I'm having a hard time speaking. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> I, um, I'm not kidding. I just, um... This is so thrilling because, you know, um, well, first I gotta say, oh shit. You know, I didn't forget you <laughs> Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I love you, I didn't forget you, Dave. Hasn't said a single thing yet. I know, I know. Mark Kamein, thank you. Uh, Nick Hall, and then Casey Bloys, those are all the producers, and then Casey Bloys <laughs> at HBO, <laughs> and Francesca Orsi, and Nora Skinny, and thank you to my- Music. Amazing, the music, there it is. Hold on. No, this is a once in a lifetime This is where it gets amazing. I'm, I'm full, I'm full. I'm full! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Jacob Fenton. 
Kuzman, my, a UTA, and Jonathan Weinstein, and, and Tiffany Kuzan at, at, at Mosaic, and my sister is here tonight, and we're going to do I'm wait, dead! Hold wait, hold on, okay. He's <laughs> <laughs> going with it. Do you think she planned that, though? I... No, there's no way. There's no way that's planned. Like, I, how do they just have a second song on hand ready to well, go? Oh, they felt that they've, they've got. Yeah, I th it felt planned in that way. No. Oh my god. No. And so that's like the fun thing about. I feel like a lot of people know that award shows you have about forty five seconds to give your acceptance. But once speech. again, the, the that award show, mm -hmm. that award, mm -hmm. the Emmys, not for her, for Iowa, for Iowa, it's for Iowa, it's for Iowa, it's for Nebraska, Wisconsin, yeah. Indiana, mm -hmm. Illinois. Not even Chicago though, the Southern part. No, it's yeah. for everybody who's not there. Mm -hmm. And although they find it funny and it was great, and by the way, like looking back, that's hilarious. But there's a Viagra commercial they've got to get to. And yeah. if they don't get to it, they're Viagra not printing that money. Viagra for that spot. Yeah. There was a- uh, Cause if they the... have to make a 60 second, a 30 second bumper. Oh, oh my absolutely God. Oh not. Oh my God, hell will just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the, the, I think it was the writer squid game. He also was like, I only have four to five seconds. So I guess I'm not going to use my translator. And then he yeah. gave his, uh, his thank yous as well too, without his translator. Cause you got 45 seconds. His translator. Yeah. Like the, his human translator. Yeah, 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 I think oh. he had, yeah, I think he had a, a human English. translator with him as well too. I was yeah. like, like Google mm -hmm. Translate was there with him. He was like, I imagine. <laughs> didn't have a time to load. That's a product placement right there. Yeah. That's a product. Placement. So that's what you're, that's what you're giving me. By the way, yeah. so is, is she not famous already? Is she actually- Jennifer Coolidge? Yeah. Is she not what? What? Like, why is she acting like she is never gonna be there again? She's. I feel like she's gonna be there 10 more times. Um, I think because she's done a lot she's of roles in just like more lighthearted ones. But that's like a perfect one. Where this mm -hmm. one was, she, I mean, this was maybe her best role outside right. of being like the evil stepmom in Cinderella Story. Oh, uh, yeah. With Hilary Duff. Stifler. Stifler's, uh, Stifler's mom. mom. American Pie. Yeah, wow. that's a classic. Right, so it's like right. she, that's her background Legally of where blonde. she comes from. And then Snap. I just feel like Cinderella's story is still my number one. On most you, of those. Do you know her in Legally yeah, Blonde? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, she's an icon. Yeah, so she's fun icon. fact, I, I have to say this. I went to a very liberal high school, private high school, art mm. school, you know, 300 kids, 400 kids at most. This bitch was one of our alumni. <gasps> Oh my God. Oh, cool. it, makes me, it makes me so happy to hear like when someone has gone to school to like do something in the arts and then they end up just like absolutely crushing it. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. And then the other 99%. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, like, where, yeah, they look like me anyway. Right. Well, look at you succeeding on all the carpets and shit at the Oscars and forgetting to bring me. You know, I will say, yeah, I will say that uh, there's a much better chance of, be, of you going to the Oscars mm -hmm. not being nominated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You're better off. My Band-Aid just fell off. Whoa, you are a train wreck tonight. Uh, my, I, I wore some wildly uncomfortable shoes and I was But they cut look great. Up. I'm not even kidding. So here's here's how the, here's here's my schedule of how the, the Emmys went because it did not look like Jeremy's. We, let, let's actually go through the scheduling of the timings and stuff of my night versus your night. Go ahead. Hair started at 11.30. There was a little bit of overlap between hair and makeup uh, around 1.30. And then I was done makeup. No, I was maybe closer to one. Done makeup by three o'clock. Shoveled a- at, We were supposed to leave at 3.15. We're supposed to leave at 315. Which means I believe that I went, I think I stopped working at 2.52. Get absolutely fucked. To go shower. <laughs> absolutely fucked. And wash my hair. And wash your hair and blow dry it and do all the things. Yeah. yeah and style it. Uh, and then I ended up having to style Matt King as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoveled <laughs> a tofu rice, rice bowl into my mouth in about four seconds and then realized that I needed the hands of either a gay man or a, someone with a feminine touch, a woman to do the corset up on my dress. Jimmy looked at it and was like, at that, this is not for me. And for anyone who's bullied me, it wasn't me with the feminine touch. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I wasn't even implying that. I was saying that like I needed, I needed uh, someone, you know. You needed somebody, it wasn't me. I needed someone that, that wasn't you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would, you could, I, Devin, I would trust you 100%. You guys, it that was corset. three zippers and two ties. It or was bows. a full corset lace up and it was a bodysuit with um, eyelets and hooks and a zipper and then three zippers on the different layers mm. on the back. And it was, oh my God, it was insane. So got Ooh. into the dress. Took a three piece suit's actually, not easy. You know who but... actually, shout out Zane's assistant. That's who ended up doing up my corset and she did an incredible job. Okay. 
and I'm sure Zane will give this whole story on his podcast, but he was rushing around the entire day trying to get a suit set up. So Zane actually showed up first and then his assistant showed up with the suit afterwards. And- well, no, yep, see, you missed a part now. And I actually, I missed a part. At 2.52, I did start getting ready, mm-hmm. but at 1.52, mm-hmm. I got a call from Zane mm-hmm. and he goes, okay, which one do you like better? I go, what do you mean? And he had, he was in a suit store <laughs> yep. and he had this, blue double-breasted blazer with the most hideous gold buttons I'd ever seen, trying on things that were never gonna look good together. He looked like a sailor. Was it Macy's? Was he at Macy's? No, God, no. Uh, honestly, it looked like it even, it looked really sketchy. I no. don't know what kind of suit it was. And he just goes, I'm kidding. He goes, I, I, was like, I was like, I think like the buttons maybe are a little, I ah, mean, I would just, and he goes, that's okay. Can I, can I change the buttons out? And I go, you have to be here in an hour. like. <laughs> My home. Yeah, what do you mean? Can you change the buttons out? Can you tailor like, and rebutton this? I gave my suit to the guy that was going to do my thing on Wednesday of last week, mm-hmm. and he still didn't get it right. Wait. This dude shows up at three <laughs> and has a new suit. I've been in this position with him. Like the, I've, I, this, it's, feels, and, this feels, this feels, yeah, yes. It's very yes. Zane. Like, yes. Yes. Well, last told, minute. Yeah, he said, like, a lot of guys get a new tie for every occasion. <laughs> Zane gets, well, he, well, and I'll, let me, when we, I don't want to give any spoilers, but the next time we have an event, with him, he has to wear a suit. He'll have to get a new suit because he lost half of it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and I have a feeling that that won't be the first time. On the second half of the night. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, he called me 150 and then at 250, I got ready. And then when I got out of the shower and was ready at 315, mm-hmm. Matt and Zane had showed up. Matt showed up with a beautiful black suit on with a brown belt and brown Looks shoes. Amazing. Yep. Okay, well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I said. No. I Well, I just go. In, the brown. He's like, ah. and I could tell he was like stressed. I go, uh, what size shoe are you? He's like, 44. I go, come on upstairs. We'll just gonna fix this up. And that was the, honestly, Matt was a little stressed at the time. Mm-hmm. It went downhill from there for him. For yeah, sure. he did not have a great night. I don't know if it's gonna be in that podcast. I'm sure they'll cover it. Oh, I'm for sure. sure well, if, cover as long it, as yeah. it's covered, then Matt had appendicitis. We didn't know that at the time. No. But no, um, no. he picked that up between when he got there mm-hmm. and when. Well, he wasn't at the Emmys very long. No. Yeah. So that was my, I believe that's actually my last memory. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So yeah, Zane's, Zane and Matt and Zane showed up both around 3.15. Matt, aside from the brown shoe, brown belt situation was like ready to go. Zane showed up in pajamas basically. <laughs> and his assistant rolled up about 10 oh. minutes afterwards with the newly tailored suit. He was making very like last minute game kind of decisions between like suit? shoe color, Looked sock color. Phenomenal. For what we were working for, with? Yeah, it looked fine, but like great for the circumstances. Lauren, if Do you I, know how many loose threads that I snipped off that thing before we left? Many. I, I gotta be honest, it doesn't matter because it's on the floor somewhere. Right, yeah, it didn't, it didn't. Anyways, anyway, so we went, we went, we did the Emmys, we more were there. We, uh, to be honest, we're like hanging out with our friends most of the time. And then we, <laughs> Zane made claims that the after party was at this specific club that is typically open Mondays and Tuesdays for whatever reason and is like- Oddly enough, yeah. Yeah, it's it's called Poppy. And it's like kind of a scene. It's like a very like LA club. Yeah, but club. every time I, I, I hear, we think I'm happy on a Monday. I'm like, yeah. eh, but is it gonna be good? And I walk Everyone in there- Everyone goes there on a Monday. It's so weird. That's like some just LA shit where it's like, do you not have jobs? Like, why are you trying to go out? And also like, why does this club flourish on a Monday night? It's because people in LA don't have jobs. I'm not entirely sure if I've been there past a Wednesday in the week. Yeah. No, I, I think I, I've I, only been there Monday bet, and Tuesday. I bet it doesn't even do well on the actual weekend. If people go other places and they know that Poppy is where you go if you're trying to be a degenerate and go drink Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wow. Yeah, no, it was That's exciting. a lot. When I got to Poppy, I think it lasted about 10 minutes before I realized that I was, I had a new- No, no, hang on, we're skipping a whole section here. So we got dropped off at an Uber at 9 p.m. Oh. We show up, the doors are closed, it's dark. We're like, oh my God, Zane, like, is the after party not here? And he checks the clock, he's like, oh my God, it's 9 p.m. They don't open till 11. We're like, oh my God, Zane, what the fuck? <gasps> so then we walk down the street to Catch, which is probably the most like LA place you could possibly go to. Every influencer ever If you ever follow somebody on Instagram, they and they're kind of new here, catch. they're going to Catch. Catch is fine. 
Catch is cute. Wow, we're gonna slander catch like that. Catch is cute. That popcorn shrimp. Yeah, just for my wait time, I'm gonna disagree with you. Yeah, I'm just getting weak. Wait, love but catch. you know what? How many times have you seen someone post that chocolate dessert where you hit it with a spoon and it just explodes? Oh, wait, that is really great. The melty one. Oh, I was about to say it is not that great. Oh, really? Oh, I liked it. Oh, it is dry as shit. Oh, like a, damn. It's like an anti ad here. <laughs> you catch whenever I'm downstairs, I'm thrilled to eat your chocolate shit. I love the chocolate ball thingy. Oh, oh yeah, we're nailing this. Yeah. Anyway, I forgot. So we about went that part, to yeah. went to catch, and uh, but we didn't. Also, on a Monday night, we show up and we can't finesse a table because none of us have the the clout essentially to get a table. Wait, really? What? What? Oh, I don't think I was present for that. Oh, because you had the clout. A catch? Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. Anyways, they said they couldn't seat us. <sighs> And so we got turned away. And honestly, at this point, I was like, I just want to fucking go home. I just want to go home. So we get into, no, and then we walked. We walked like three blocks, which- if, By the way, if, if anyone wants to just go pull up their phone right now and look at Poppy to catch to Craig's, not that <gasps> far. Uh, you know, motherfucker, if you wanted to trade shoes and walk in my ripping strap on platform heels. Yeah, no thanks. Anything more than 13 steps in shoes like that is too far. We walked at least two blocks. Entirely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean entirely. Yeah. Yeah, and that's too far. That's too far. Yeah. So we sat down, we got seated, we got a table at this like Italian spot and I had one piece of garlic bread and decided that my dress was so tight, ripping into me. I was bleeding, I had cuts. I put myself in an Uber and I went to bed. Yeah. And my night ended there. You Man. left them? I I Devin, when I tell you that there is not a room for a single spaghetti noodle in my dress, not oh. a si Three zippers and a corset. There was not a single room. There was not a single space for a single, a, not a penne, well, not a rigatoni, not a macaroni, not an angel hair noodle, not a fettuccine. It turned out there wasn't any room for that, for that in my suit either because the moment I got to Poppy, <laughs> I felt a nice new breeze on my nuts and I realized <laughs> that I split my Tom Ford suit in <laughs> half. And I just went, and I'm like, and I mean just like, Butthole to crotch, <gasps> just the whole thing. Were you gonna say scrotum? Yeah, no. I thought. I, thought, I heard yeah, a little yeah, scrotum I coming. Little scrotum -y. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you heard that, David. Gross. Uh, I mean, it wasn't like I'm like, like, like I don't know if the tailor is going to be able to make these yeah. whole again. I think wasn't that like your your engagement suit or something? Anyway, it's probably time to retire that thing. Twelve thousand dollar suit, so we're gonna try and figure it out. You know what? For the mems, maybe it's time we just retire it. That's like uh, to the point where I can kind of get like a, a write off of my taxes. That's for an artifact. Off. God, you gotta it's keep that around that we forever. We want to keep around though, <laughs> do we? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, maybe two minutes. Just and then like, what's funny is I wish I'd been there for that. That's like one of the only things that I was like, fuck. I wish I had stayed out. But but we got there. I don't know what time it was, but like I was there for hours, and I realized I, there was not one point in time where I was bothered that my entire fucking pants were ripped open. It's dark in there, you're fine. That's kind of how I felt about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it's dark. There's enough it's people It's like doing... you're going commando, it's not like you got like a nude sack hanging out. Yeah, I, I might not take it out. Yeah. And so, but I'd shave, so it's okay. Um, is this, this, I feel like this is a good spot for a Manscaped ad. Do we, uh... <laughs> Manscaped, the lawnmower. For, uh, so the moral of the story is, uh, there's always someone doing something dumber and mm -hmm. you just have to be that second dumbest person. Yeah, I agree. Or have a dress that has two less zippers and not a corset. Did you want to play the fuckboy game? That's not for this episode. Oh my God, we have incredible guests. Is that for this episode? No, it's not for this episode. But you just got people real excited about it. You gave a little teaser. I am, um, so I know most of the, I've known 99% of the people that it's like on our pod. There's mm -hmm. only been a couple that are like brand new. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to, to branch out. Yeah. And we're all starting to branch out with funny women. And that's- What a concept. <laughs> Funny women. You're gonna try and make that a play. It's not gonna work. So <laughs> these fucking personalities uh -huh. are so funny. Are you trying to get people hyped up without giving spoilers? Are you hyped? Um, baby, I've been hyped. I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah. I'm only nervous because I'm trying to figure out how dirty we're gonna get. Uh, it's gonna be raunchy. It's gonna be a little raunchy, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's also in the middle of my work day, so. We, I don't even, we might get Adderall Jeremy, we might not, I don't know. I feel like you should definitely not be Adderall Jeremy. God, all right. Uh, no, I, yeah, you're right. Um, it's early enough, we're fine. Yeah. I um, No, I, I just think that their comedic timing and level of raunch 
is they just have the most insane stories like the life experience like when i listen to them they're a little older than i am but like i i'm like did i miss <laughs> many chapters of my life well i asked you before this podcast yeah how many more men you would have liked to have slept with had you had you if you could just put have like meeting me off by well if you want to measure it in men you'd have sex with that and you said, eh, eh, eh. I feel like your answer will be different tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I also think that there's a memory that you regain mm -hmm. when you're with someone who's very similar to you, who you've kind of like shared. The, like if I sat next to somebody who I knew in college, mm -hmm. oh, I would right, remember right, right, right. Yeah, 900 yeah, yeah. things about back. myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would remember that in the perspective that I want to remember, of course, but that's the way they would be retold. So if they're talking about casual hookups, you're suddenly gonna remember all of the casual hookups that you've had in the past? Is that no, what you're saying? I don't think I've ever, ever had a casual hookup. That's what, that's what, I was, that's what, no, I, that's what you told no, no, me. No. So I just wanna make you? sure that we're I on the same page. I think you heard that from somebody else. That you've never yeah. had a casual hookup? Yeah, no. Hmm. I, I'm not, what, what no, but you? I think that you told me. <laughs> I just, um, I'm just excited to hear their take. Oh, I can't wait on anything. On anything. But also, I don't wanna to listen to any more of the stories. What do you mean? Like, I, I want to, to, I feel like I've heard of the couple hours of content I've listened to. Yeah. All the, I want to hear those stories for the first time from them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. I don't know. There's gonna be no. I'm sure there's no shortage of stories that they have that are that are brand new that are not, not on another podcast. Some people can't do yeah. that. Some people are like they've got the same shit they just like go back to. No, you know what? I like so here's here's like one little tip is like in the comedian vein. I feel like there are some comedians that do. Are you um, giving me comedian tips right now? No, no. I'm just saying. I feel like there's some comedians who have crossed over into podcasting who uh like repeat a lot of their of their material. But then I think there are some comedians on podcasts that are just like so naturally funny that they don't even have to focus on on like reusing anything over and over again. 100% agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, I've listened to so many episodes of their podcast now and I have heard maybe one story reference twice. Okay. Who do they usually have them for guests? Um, Doctors. A lot of, specialists. yeah, a lot of like mental, or not mental health, like sex, sexual health specialists. That's, yeah. I mean, uh, as if on cue, we're people right here. in entertainment. Is it fun? Q? Yeah. Sexual entertainment specialists. You learn a lot with them. This is great. Do you think they can teach me about something about um, the, the female body? I'm sure they can. Yeah. They can probably teach you about the male body. Even. Uh, they probably can. Really? They probably can. That scares me. Um, like I, I'm at an age right now where I don't want to know anything new about me. Like I, like mm -hmm. I even, if I haven't found it yet, I let's leave it where it is. Mm, like the like the mold, the, the freckle above your butt crack that I was like, has this always been here? That's always been there. That I've known about that. Yeah, I didn't know about that. We've had a connection. Day. Yeah. yeah. You, you and the mole. Yeah. The freckle. Well, pick a lane. I don't know. Is it a mole or freckle? Definitely a freckle. It's a freckle? Like, okay. Calm down. A mole. I mean, it's no. flat, but I don't know. I think, I don't know. Anyways, I found the freckle the other day and I was like, is this, are we sure this is okay? Should we get this checked out? Did you have any of the stories you wanted to share? Yes. So on TikTok right now, fantasy football season is here. Mm. And it is it is all the rage on TikTok right now for the fantasy football content and it is fucking hysterical. Album of Frats over? Uh, uh, Bama Rush is over. Yeah. Oh my God, babe, where you been? That's old news. Bama Rush is way, way over. Um, so one of the TikToks that I saw today, um, and, and it's mostly girlfriends just mourning the loss of their boyfriends because here's one that sums it up pretty well. Um, to the fantasy football girlfriends whose lives are controlled by NFL until February because we get no attention all Sunday, all day Sunday, Monday nights, Thursday nights, college game day, and three to five fantasy leagues will have them on their phone all day slash week, planning the rosters, trades, checking the scores and group chats, plus the one bench guy plays and scores 10 fantasy points our whole day and night is ruined because now some fantasy team with a name like Tom's Taint is in the lead this week. Could be worse. Could be worse. And so on one of the episodes of the podcast that I was um, doing research with today, mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, guys of a podcast that they were guesting on um, was saying that he is a massive Mets fan, is obsessed with baseball. Said so there are a hundred and- Tough pick. Oh my God. Realizing now I can never date a baseball guy. Holy shit. Even though they do have gray butts and the pants are quite flattering on the butt. 162 baseball games in a year. Yeah. A that That's like every other day. Think about how many games I play in a year. That is, that math is so, no, every other day. That's like basically every other day. That is 
So insane. Actually, can you Google how many games per year are in basketball and in football? Football 16. Ha what? Football 16. One six. One six. Each team only plays 16 yeah, games. I think basketball is what, 64? What? 82. Ah, 82. Basketball is 82. Okay. And football is. And 16. 17 games? That's it? So you would want to be dating a football fan? Me? No. No, no, no. This is a this is a, <laughs> a metaphorical question. Like based on the number of games, you'd want to be uh dating a football guy, right? Baseball, 162 games. What about hockey? That just smells bad. Oh my God. Um, 56 games? Oh my God. Oh my God. And so they, the conversation came up that- um, See, at least I take you to games when I go. Yeah, thank God. God you, also, you also are not a diehard sports fan. Thank fucking God. I like sports. Yeah, yeah. I also like, like sports. being a fan of I, sports. I like events. I like events. I like good music. I like Love good friends. Music. I like sweaters that are branded with the team that I'm rooting for. You do like a new fresh sweater with a soft inside. Big fan, big, big fan. And so- You love being a fan. I love being a fan. We've talked about this so many times. Like, I would have been such a good sorority girl because I just love being a fan. Your body count would have been on another level. Because I'm a great fan. But could you be with a guy that has his phone out at dinner no. with the fan? No. Because he has to Because he has to know every the fucking five score. Seconds. And so that was the conversation is that like there was uh, in this metaphorical situation, whatever of someone's old relationship where he wouldn't go to a wedding because it was in Tulum and they didn't know what the cable situation was gonna be like or the internet situation to be able to watch the Mets game. Yeah, I don't wanna that hear- would be, a, that, would be a, uh, that would be a deal breaker for me, 100%. I, I, that is crazy. I don't wanna hear a goddamn complaint. <laughs> that is crazy. You know, I, I, I truly, I truly do feel quite blessed now to have just like a, a like a tech nerd, bro. Oh, <laughs> that's not sweet. That's not sweet at all. Oh, I, uh, you know, I, but also there's something about guys in particular. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm, I, there's something about guy. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm what is this look? I'm listening. Oh, I thought you were like waiting to like, I was like, no, no, no. I'm Jeremy, I've got one and a half brain cells left still firing right now. So you better go. We're <laughs> up on the day. So the issue I have is that the same guy uh -huh. is gonna find all the time in the world for his fucking fantasy league. Yeah. You know, there's things it's like, I just needed two minutes. I needed two minutes over here. You couldn't find it. You had two hours every day, except for Sunday with seven, eight hours. Mm -hmm. You couldn't give me two fucking, I would, I would just drive me insane. Insane. Because like, so you're taking, you're about, taking fantasy football a girlfriend who is suffering side. I'm taking the person in the relationship who's not obsessed with fantasy. Yeah. I, yeah. I have known a few ladies that were obsessed with fantasy and I can't stand them just as much. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. It's not just a fantasy football bro. It could be a fantasy football girl You know what's too. beautiful though? What? Can you imagine what Robin Lauren's Life is like, cause I bet they both have a fantasy team. Oh my God, we've got, yeah, we've got a, a, a married couple friend who are both equally obsessed. No, she's a bigger sports fan than he yeah, is. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And Rob's a big sports fan. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I saw another TikTok where this guy had put together like the most incredible gift basket. Okay. Just to, you know, um, just to to warm his girlfriend up to the upcoming fantasy, fantasy football season. season. Yeah. It had like he Sephora gift cards, yeah. all her favorite snacks. It had a new um, I think it was basically like like uh like a gift basket on crack that was really specific to her with like I think there was a Target gift card in there too. Like things to like kind of keep her busy and like <laughs> You know, probably for the next so 14 like an adult, minutes. like an adult Game Boy for, you know, distraction. Girlfriend to distract, yeah. 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 And to try and try and bribe into probably See, being a little more lenient. When I want to get involved in football, I get the bougie seats at the stadium at SoFi mm -hmm. and I take us and we get new shirts every time. Yeah. And then at a certain point in time you go, do you want to leave so we miss the crowd? Yeah. And then we leave. Yeah, yeah. Sports fan. Man, yeah. My dad actually, I'm realizing, is kind of like a hockey, like fanatic. He really does actually check the game on his phone, like when we're at dinner and no. stuff. No, no, no. Isn't that huge in Canada too? No, hockey? no, no, no. Huge. Yeah. no, no. Huge. It's not about checking the phone. That part I understand. Mm -hmm. It's recording the game, mm -hmm. not checking the score. 
Oh yeah, he does that too. It's the same way we- <laughs> There's been so many times in the car where we have to turn the radio off and just like- have Sit to in silence. Sit in silence just so that they, cause I mean like, I feel like when before aux cords and Bluetooth and stuff, like we just listen to the radio, right? And so yeah. to risk, to avoid the risk of hearing the score from like some kind of like radio announcer, but we just, no radio. It's kind of like, can you imagine a world where Game of Thrones mm -hmm. Happened 162 times a year or something like that. No, 16 or yeah. no, 52 times, right? Yeah, yeah. And you loved it so much and wanted to watch it that you would put mute on everything else mm -hmm. because everybody else is also a Game of Thrones fan. But like, they can just like watch it whenever or like, yeah. oh, they'll just talk about it casually. You, you'd have to leave the room. Like the, he doesn't want to know the score. Yeah. I mean, same thing with like, like, so the Bachelor finale part one was last night and part uh, the final part is next week. Can't believe you didn't come get me. Keep going. And I oh, don't know. No, we're watching it with Cal. Asian Girl Squad and Cal. Got it. We have a date next Tuesday to watch it. Yeah, it's great. But like, I will 100% not go on Twitter, not go on Instagram, like until we finish the episode in case like, if we like start even 20 minutes. Do you have a favorite? What? Do you have a favorite? Well, so the thing about this season is there's two Bachelorettes. Okay. And so they're like kind of having their own journeys together. No, oh. that's like not how that works. Now they end up like end up with each other? That would be the remix that would get a lot of straight bros watching. Yeah, not men. Yeah. Let's yeah. get in there. No. But wait, so there's two separate couples? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow, twice the fun. Twice the fun. Honestly, in hearing about the whole sports guy fanatic, it makes me think of my personal obsession with Big Brother which Ooh. is a three episode per week show. Three episodes per week? Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh! My mention, favorite days of the week. How many, year, <laughs> how many years has that been on the air? At least 20. They're on season 24. Yeah. Oh my God. They also have Big Brother, like Canada, Big Brother. Celebrity. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> UK. I mean, it's similar to The Bachelor. Like, I mean, not. Like, that's a totally different level. But like, Bachelor has Bachelor. Bachelorette and they did do Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise. Paradise. So it's like, you can kind of always be watching part of the franchise at some point, but right. it is only once a week. Right. That's aggressive, three times a week. Well, and I feel uh, like Netflix now with like the whole like um, dated and related, love is blind. Like it oh my feels God. like a Bachelor, Bachelorette show. You oh my know? God, yeah, we, I started watching dated and related, which the title of that show, I feel like we probably could have workshopped a little <laughs> more because it's really giving incest. Yes. Dated and related, like, Tell me that that's not like obviously a reality show about siblings dating each other. And you started to watch it. Oh, I'm four episodes in. By the way, if it was a little incesty after this week on, <clears throat> you'd watch it. After? You didn't turn off Game of Thrones this oh, week. Game of I Thrones. haven't seen it. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. No spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. Ew. That's like <laughs> This is such a spoiler. And on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we'll bleep that out. We'll bleep, we'll bleep it. We'll bleep it. We'll bleep it. We'll bleep it. I, I want you to apologize to our audience. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> At least you're paid. There's no, way, there's no way you didn't see the memes. You didn't see any memes? No. <gasps> I stayed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. What you do with Bachelor, oh. I did with Game of Thrones. I was like, stay away from the Instagram, the oh. tweets. But it's so hard. It's been it. so many days. I feel like it's like within a 24 hour window, oh. it's like, it's Posted tough, that. but you can do it. Right. But once you get out of that 48 hour window, it's it's tough. It's like walking around the lines. Bye. <laughs>